How do you transition out of a corporate job that may pay well, but makes you unhappy? How do you transition out of a business that makes you unhappy? How do you switch jobs? When is the right time to burn the ships and quit and just go for it? Or should you start a business on the side while you're working in a job? And then you let that get up to a certain level and then you quit your job. Transitioning out of your current situation into a new situation. How do we do this? Because you may be listening to this now going, my job sucks. I hate my boss. I hate my colleagues. I hate the commute. It's killing me. This is not what I want to do. But maybe you've got responsibilities. You've got to pay the rent. You need money. You've got to live. Maybe you've got a wife and kids you've got to support. Maybe you've got a husband and kids you've got to support. Maybe you're a single mother or a single father. Maybe you don't have kids. You're just a you know, fancy free person living your life, but you got expenses. You got a car lease. You got your rent. You got, you got to have fun too, right? You got to go travel. You got to do certain things. You got to eat. You got that feeling of feeling stuck, stuck in a job or stuck in a business. Or maybe you don't feel stuck. Maybe actually you like your job and you like your business, but you know there's something else better out there. But it's just pretty comfortable. It's comfortable. Your job's comfortable. You like your boss. You like your colleagues. And you know that you're capable of more, but because it's comfortable, you're just kind of like, yeah, I'll just, it's all right. It's not too bad. I'll stay here. But then that little nagging voice is in your brain going, Ooh, you should have started that business. You should start that business. That's what you really want to do. Any of those scenarios speak to you? I've been there. I've been there many times. I don't have a definitive answer or a playbook on how to do it, but I'm going to give you a couple of options. And I'm going to talk about a couple of ways that I have done it. Uh, over the last 20 years. Uh, one way includes burning the ships, which means just setting fire to everything and just going and just, just doing it. Just quit your job and then just force yourself to go and make the most of the next situation. I've also had a gig, you know, had a, um, a paid job. And then on the side, I've been experimenting with other things. So we'll talk about both scenarios. Uh, when I was in uh, Brisbane, Australia in 1998, I had been working six years at the Courier Mail newspaper as a newspaper reporter. And uh, if we go back even to like 1993, when I first became a copy boy in Australia at that time, there was a recession and I was a 17 year old kid who just left high school and my mother and my father and my friends and my peers we're all desperate um, for me or, you know, we're all encouraging me and my age group to get a job because there was a recession. People weren't hiring. It was tough. And so my mother was like, get a job, get a job, get a job. And then I actually got a job as a copy boy at the Corey Mellon newspaper. And I was made to feel like I'd won the lottery, which I had in the circumstances. You could argue that I had won the lottery. So I was pushed into a job and I celebrated and I was thrilled that I had a job. I was in the workplace doing a recession, no less. And it was wonderful training. It was incredible, but it set me down a path of being in a job, uh, which is good for a certain amount of time of your life. Now, 20 years later, it's not good for me, but there are phases where it is good. In 1998, I was 23. I'd had six years in that job. I was writing front page uh, articles for the newspaper. It was a very famous industrial dispute back in 1998 where the Maritime Union of Australia, um, all of their wharfies, their stevedores were sacked by Patrick Steve uh, Stevedores, which was like a, um, a, uh, you know, a shipping uh, transportation company. And so I was on my articles about this story were on the front page of the paper for like two or three months. So every, every day I'd wake up and I'd see by James Swanick and there would be my story about this story. 
I was destined for great things, for huge things within that newspaper, within that organization. And if I had stayed at that newspaper, I would have been transferred to Canberra, which was the Australian capital, uh, which is the Australian capital, where I would have become a federal political reporter, where I would have been interviewing the prime minister of Australia, and then probably would have done that for two years, at which point I would have been assigned to, uh, to be a chief of staff at a newspaper, which is another promotion. And then maybe I would have moved on to become an editor at maybe the Daily Telegraph newspaper in Australia, or maybe in Melbourne, the Herald Sun. And then I would have been assigned to be the editor in chief. And then maybe I would have been a managing editor. And maybe now I'd be high up the ranks in News Limited, which owns all of those newspapers in Australia. So that was the path. But at 23, I was like, you know what? I want to travel the world. I want to go and live in London and use London as a base to go and backpack through Europe and explore the world and learn a language and meet lots of interesting people. I don't want to stay in Australia and only, only be exposed to one style and way of living. So I made the decision to quit my job in 1998, much to the shock and horror of <laughs> my my parents and to colleagues and to my bosses they're like what are you what are you doing like you you've, you're like you've been you brought up through the system you, you, you've been in this six years you're young you're the youngest guy who's getting front page stories you're destined for greatness and i'm like no nah, i didn't really want to do it i mean i liked it but i didn't love it and i wanted to do something else and so i made the decision to quit and i burned the ships so to speak and burning the ships the, that phrase comes from um I think it's the Spanish Armada where this guy, uh, the um, Spanish captain was invading um, a South American country and uh, they had to conquer the, the natives in order to be able to take this land. And so the captain told his crew, burn the ships, which means burn their own ships. So that way there was absolutely no chance of retreat. So knowing that there was no chance of retreat, it forced them to really focus and really defeat the natives. So then they could, you know, create a new empire and create a new, new civilization. Whereas if the idea was being, if you know, you hadn't burned the ships, you're always got that fallback option where you kind of fight the natives, but if it's not working out, you just go, Oh, okay, quickly retreat, jump on the ships and let's sail back to Spain. That's where the phrase comes from. Burn the ships. Um, so I burned the ships. I just resigned. And I got on a plane and I flew to London and I'm said, I'm going to make it. And for the next two months, eight weeks, I slept on the sofa uh, of, um, of some friends place in Shepherd's Bush in Southwest in, sorry, in West London. Um, and went through all of my Australian dollars, went through all of my money to the point where I couldn't afford to buy razor blades. <laughs> Not that I had a huge, big, thick beard at the time. I just had a bit of bum fluff shining through. But when I was going for job interviews, you know, I didn't look as presentable as I could because it would cost me like four pounds to go and buy a pair of, you know, some Gillette razor blades to shave. So, and I was eating like 10 cent cans of baked beans and, and um, you know, bread and baked beans, you know, all that kind of nonsense that you do when you're young, you don't have any money. But I did it because I, I saw the bigger picture. I'm like, I'm willing to go through this short term pain and struggle because ultimately I want to live and work in the UK and travel the world. And then sure enough, eight weeks later, I ended up getting a great job at Sky Sports and I covered cricket and rugby and I got paid a modest salary and I was okay. And I used that money uh, to travel. Um, and I saw the world and that has shaped my, my personality. Um, so that was cool. And then of course, you know, I, I ended up four years later, I moved over to, to America. I burned the ships again, four years later, even having a, you know, getting a, a decent enough salary or money in, in the UK and living there for four years, I said, right, I'm going to go to, to go to the U S. And so I burned the ships again at, age 27 and went to LA. And like I've told the story many times, I didn't know whether I was going to turn left or right out of the airport when I landed, ended up living in the Hermosa beach hostel for 90 days and 90 nights, paying $15 a night, living in a bunk bed with other snoring backpackers and, you know, worked on a job site in Bel Air um, for $75 cash a day as a 27 year old man who'd had a professional journalism career. Now I'm doing laboring work. Um, you know, getting paid cash under the table with a bunch of illegal Mexican immigrants and 
you know, you could, you could probably see my former colleagues and bosses back in Australia going, what the hell is James doing with his life? Like, what is he doing with his life? He could have been the editor of the newspaper by now. Now he's 27 living in a hostel. But again, I saw the bigger picture, which was, I want to be in America. This is a land of opportunity. I, I'm going to make it here. I want to make it happen. And, and so I was willing to go backwards and struggle a little bit, um, seemingly struggle in order to, to go forward. So that was fine. I did it. And now, you know, years later, I'm now, as I'm recording this, I'm sitting in my California, my Los Angeles home in Southern California, looking out at palm trees and a beautiful blue sky. And I have a podcast, which people listen to and, you know, successful business and friends and family and health and all that kind of stuff. Like big picture, right? It was, it was short term pain back then, but you look at the big picture and you go, well, look, I'm living in America. I'm got all these amazing opportunities and life's pretty good. So that was another situation where I burn, burn the ships. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you one or two more stories about when I, when I've done this, and then we'll talk about some practical steps or, or ways in which you could, you know, take my story and implement some of the strategies that I've used into your, into maybe your own life. Um, when I was um, living in Hollywood for a while, I was living in, in, in Hollywood on the corner of Highland and DeLong Prey Avenues in Hollywood, about two blocks, uh, sorry, about three blocks south of where they actually have the Oscars every year on Hollywood Boulevard there at the Dolby Theater. If you walk three blocks down Highland and take a right, I lived in a house um, just along that street there called DeLong Prey Avenue. And uh, I lived there from 2004 through 2010. And then in 2010, I actually hosted a burn the ships party <laughs> where I was like, I invited friends and I decided I was going to leave LA and I was going to go and, you know, go and live in, um, um, Buenos Aires and Argentina. It was, I, it was actually 2009, not 2010, it was 2009. And, uh, I had a burn the ships party. I literally, the invite, the E E vice that I sent out had a picture of a boat with in flames and I called it's the burn the ships party and I put it in the calendar and that was my way of saying that's when I'm absolutely leaving. And then I told my landlord I'm leaving on this date and you know, it started, things started to get real. Then I had to start moving stuff out and giving sofas and beds away and packing up all of my stuff. And, and um, I burned the ships. I put it in the calendar. I said, right, that's it. I'm leaving LA. I'm not coming back. I'm going to Buenos Aires to lick my wounds from my failed business that I had at the time. And we'll see what happens. Then I went to Buenos Aires and I learned some Spanish and did tango. And then I read the book, Never Read Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. And, and then when I finally came back to LA, that's when I ended up getting my dream job hosting Sports Center on ESPN from 2010 through 2012. Now, here's the thing. This is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting because now I'm kind of like, I'm in my 30s, my mid 30s, there's responsibilities, right? You're not a young kid anymore. You're not like young in your 20s. And, you know, now all of a sudden it, it kind of becomes uncool or unsexy if you, if you're just, if you're some like mid to late thirties guy who doesn't have any money and is just going to like whatever. So I got this job. It was out of Bristol, Connecticut at the home of ESPN. And it was my dream job, a job that I'd wanted to always do. Right. And that was host a television show. And I got to tell you, it was awesome. It was awesome. I got to turn up to work at 6 PM every day. So my, my day's work didn't start until six. I'd have a production meeting where I meet with the producer and the director. And we'd, we'd look at the, the rundown of what we were ultimately going to present on sports center that night at 11 PM. So we'd start off like, oh, James will open the show and then my co-host will come in and James, you're going to do the, the highlights of the, of the Patriots um, Jets game or, the, or, and then you're going to do the baseball. Actually, baseball wouldn't have been on at that time, but you know, you're going to talk about the um, injury to Roger Federer. You're going to talk about some Champions League and then my co-host, you're going to do this and blah, blah, blah. And then you'd go away and you'd script the show and then at, 10:45, you'd go down into the studio and you'd prepare, and then at 11 o'clock, Sports Center would roll, and it's like you'd play the music. Did it, did it. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sports Center. James Swanick here. Blah blah blah, and just go into it. Right. That was a pretty damn good good gig. You start work at six, you finish at like 
uh, you wake up the next morning at like, you know, eight thirty nine in the morning, you got the whole day ahead of you. Pretty cushy job. You get to watch sport all day, you get to be on TV, you get to think sport, talk sport. It's fun as hell. But here's the thing, right? While it was a good job and it was a fun job and it was my dream job, for me, it was still a job where I had to be somewhere at a certain time and I had to leave somewhere at a certain time. Now, that's okay for, for, for many people and it's been okay for me at many times in my life. But at this stage, I wanted to make my mark as an entrepreneur. I wanted to make lots of money. I wanted to control my time. I wanted to be able to be flexible and go traveling whenever I want and hang out with whoever I want and just wake up one day and go, you know what? I'm going to go to Australia tonight. Let's just go. That's what I dreamed about having that independence. And so while the job at ESPN was great, I still had to be somewhere. So I still felt like I was in prison a little bit. So I made the decision to burn the ships. But Here's the thing. Let me just backtrack a little bit. Before I made the decision to, to, to leave that job and to burn the ships, what I was doing was for the second year of that sports center job, I started learning about online marketing and about business. And what I mean by that is when I would wake up at nine or nine 30 in the morning in Bristol, Connecticut, after hosting the show, I'd go to the gym, I'd work out, I'd come back, I'd make some breakfast slash lunch around 11, 30, 12. And then from like one until four for three hours, I would focus on learning how to write a video sales letter. Or I'd focus on how to produce um, an online product that I could sell. Or I would learn from, I remember learning from a guy, what was his name? A guy that teaches how to write BSLs. Oh, damn it can't remember his name. It'll come to me. Anyway, I started learning and learning and learning and learning and learning about how to create an online business. So I could have, well, sorry, in the first year I was working at ESPN in 2010, I would just, when I would wake up at nine and go to the gym and come back and eat food, I'd just watch TV the rest of the day, not really focus on, on anything really. I'd just kind of kill time, walk around Bristol. Oh yeah, whatever wait until I had to shower at five and go into the office at six. And that was a bit of a waste of time, really. And then in 2011, on the side, I started to learn about being an entrepreneur and building a business. So for three hours of my day, before I would go into the sports center office, I would learn online marketing. That's what I mean by you can be learning on the side. You can be building a business on the side. And what I actually did was I wrote a, I wrote a little book called... Um, insider journalism secrets, which was a PDF little electronic book, which taught people how to get a job in journalism. Cause I'd been successful in getting jobs in journalism around the world. And I wrote it and it was all right. It's just, you know, but it gave me some experience. It gave me some, um, um, yeah, it gave me experience. You have me experience of building a business and trying to sell it and starting, starting a WordPress site and, trying to get people to click the buy now button and then getting payments and setting up the credit card processing. And um, so I could take payments and dealing with customers. And, you know, I learned about building an, an email auto responder and writing emails that you automatically send to people on your list and, you know, all those kind of things. So I did that for a year in 2011 on the side. I, 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 I made sure that there were three hours of that day before of each day before I went into ESPN to learn this kind of stuff. Because I learned that kind of stuff, right. And I had some kind of comfort and understanding that it became easier for me then in 2012 to burn the ships and leave ESPN and just go for broke and go, right. I'm not going to earn the, the handsome amount of money that I've been earning from ESPN. Now I'm going to stop earning that. And I'm going to go and, set forth in the world and go and make my mark as an entrepreneur. So I did, I burned the ships again. I just went done. That's it. I'm out. Now what happened over the next two years after I left that gig from 2012 to 2014 um, for the next two years, you can look at it back. You can look back at that time now and go, Oh, that was great. But I've got to tell you at the time, the next, the two years after I left that ESPN gig were really, really very hard for me. Hard for me financially because money was not coming in or not a lot of money was coming in. I was making, making a little bit of money from that PDF book, Insider Journalism Secrets, 
but not a lot of money was coming in. I had some savings and I was going through the savings. And for those two years, I tried to go out there and learn. I went to conferences and seminars and I just digested information. I tried to get the book going a little bit, but I was never really making um, uh, a lot of money. And so I actually felt, fell into, I wasn't say I was depressed, but I had, mo I had you know, phases where I was like not feeling very secure. I was insecure about things. And it wasn't that I was pretending that I was making money, but I was hiding the fact that I wasn't making money. So I, on the outside, people were like, oh, look at this guy, he's traveling around. He's, you know, because I was in Vancouver at one time, I was in LA, I was in New York. I, I was, you know, I was traveling around. It looked like I had this cool kind of life where I'm being a, not so much a playboy, but like I'm, I'm just doing all this cool stuff. But really, I wasn't making any money. And inside, I was like, shit, did I do the right thing here, leaving that ESPN job? But I didn't want to be in corporate America. Right? I didn't want to have to go back to a job. But there were times where I thought about it. I thought maybe I should go and get a corporate America job. Maybe I should go in and get a job and get the private health insurance and get the holidays a year and have colleagues and have a routine and turn up at a certain time and go home at a certain time. And maybe that'll be good for me. And I had those, those thoughts at times, but I, I didn't execute on it. I'm glad I didn't because now I, I much prefer this you know, new lifestyle that I have of building a business and being independent and having money come in and doing what I want when I want. But I, I had a lot of self-doubt um, at the time. The turning point really for me was when I invested money to be coached by someone who was 10 years ahead of me. Um, in this case, it was a guy called Ty Lopez, who's a uh, online marketer. You may have seen his, some of his, his stuff online. And I invested a huge amount of money of my savings to be coached, personally coached and mentored by him. And even that took some time. Like it took a good eight months before that relationship really bore considerable fruit in terms of money coming into my account. So you really have to think that for about two years, a little bit more than two years, I was kind of financially struggling as a, as a man in his, in his late thirties, didn't, I didn't feel great about that, but I felt good about the fact that I was learning and I was being coached and I was being mentored and I was progressing, even though it felt slow um, at the time. Over time, gradually, I wouldn't say it was overnight, but gradually I then started to feel more confident with this coaching. I started to take action. I then ultimately created the 30 day no alcohol challenge. Uh, I made sales, money started to come through. I had the podcast, this podcast going where I was talking about certain things. I did some coaching. I took a couple client, clients on where I'd help them get very clear on what they wanted to do. I learned how to make a sale on the phone where I talked to someone and um, helped them take action and give me their credit card details so I could take the, the transaction. Because, you know, sales is a hard thing when you don't know, know how to do it. It can be very icky and you're like, oh, I don't want to do sales but I learned how to do sales. I learned how to help people. And then over time, I'm kind of like speeding through the last couple of years, a little bit here, but then it became like create the Swanick sleep um, business, start selling the Swanick's bullet blocking glasses. Now we get it to a point where we created a million dollar business in 11 months and we're, we're revenues going up and you know, now I'm traveling whenever I want and I'm going to seminars and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just doing whatever I want. Now it's awesome for me in my life, right? So um, let's look at the two things that I implemented there. The two things are you burn the ships. That means you've got no retreat. You just quit and then you just go for it. And sometimes it'll be hard. Like it was hard for me. I burned the ships with, with my job back in Australia to go to London and I was slept on a friend's sofa for two months until I got a job and I had, and I was broke. Right. So I burned the ships and it was tough for, for eight weeks. Okay. Then when I burned the ships in London and moved to Los Angeles, it was tough for three months really. Cause I was living in a hostel and I was getting paid $75 cash a day to, to just make ends meet while I'm hustling to try and find a job somewhere or figure out what it is I'm going to do long term. So that took, that was took at least three months. Then later on, uh, I burned the ships from leaving LA and just going down to South America and trying to learn Spanish and tango and, you know, see what it's like to live in another continent, burn the ships there. 
And then when I got the, the, the job, the dream job sports center at ESPN, uh, even though that was terrific and it actually gave me immense pleasure, I still looked at the bigger picture and I was like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want a different lifestyle. I want to travel and, and do things. I burned the ships there. But before I burned the ships on the side, I was learning processes and systems and ideas that would ultimately help me go into the entrepreneurial world. Okay. So two, two ways of doing things that you can either do one or the other, or you can implement both. That is burn the ships. If you're in a job right now that you hate, you can just walk in and just quit. I'm out. And then you just figure it out. You've got no, no, there's no retreat, right? You've got to make money. So now it makes you focus, gives you clarity. Now you go a hundred miles an hour because you have to, because you've got to put food on the table. You've got to support a family because you've got to support yourself. Right? Or while you're doing this job at the moment, which you dislike and you're not happy with, or it's, or maybe you are happy with it, but you're not as happy as you know you could be if you're doing something else. On the side, you start digesting all the information you can about whatever thing it is that you want to do. So you might say, let, let's just say, we go with on the side. Let's just say you're going to learn something on the side, right? Or you're going to build a business on the side while you're working in a job. I hear this. The biggest objection I get all the time is like, oh, I just got no time. I'm just tired at the end of the day. You know, I work nine to five. And then by the time I get home, I'm just tired. I'm exhausted. Well, what I say to that is boo fucking who? Excuse my language. I, I'm going to have to put an E explicit on this now <laughs> you know the scene in the movie jerry Maguire, where uh tom cruise's character who plays jerry Maguire, is on the plane and he's sitting next to cuba gooding jr's character who plays um the nfl player and uh tom cruise's character jerry Maguire, is complaining and he's going i lost the number one draft pick the night before the draft my life is cloaked in failure and he's just whining and whinging and Cuba Gooding Jr. is listening to Tom Cruise and he pauses and he, and he turns to Tom Cruise's character and he goes, well, boo fucking who? As if to say, well, I don't care, man. What are you whining and bitching and complaining about? Just get on with it. So if you tell me, oh, I'm tired at the end of the day, I'm just exhausted. Well, boo fucking who? Wake up earlier and work an hour before you go to work. Or when you come back and you go to the gym or you're exercising, listen to education while you're doing it. Don't just do the workout and then say, oh, I've got no time to learn programs or learn how I'm going to build this business. Chunk it. Listen to stuff. I mean, I, just, I came back from the gym and, uh, an hour ago. I was, went to the Crunch Gym on Sunset Boulevard here and I put in my wireless earbuds and I listened to a conversation that I recorded with a business mentor about two weeks ago, just to remind me to, ref to refresh my memory. So I'm in the gym working out my, my muscles and exercising while I'm learning stuff. You got to prioritize this stuff, right? You got to prioritize it. So, and also if you're watching TV, like if you're at home and you're watching like Game of Thrones or you're watching the voice or I don't know, whatever you're watching HBO or you've got Netflix on and stuff. I got no sympathy for you because that's time that you could be spent learning how to do something on the side by building a business on the side. And even if you don't want to build a business, it could be another job. If you like a job, if you like the security of a job, you like being part of a team and you don't feel like you're a natural entrepreneur, that's okay. That's okay. But maybe you could be spending the time on the side researching other jobs, other industries drawing up a list of contacts of people that you know who work in the industry you want to work in and reaching out to them and finding out how you can apply for a job and how you can persuade someone to hire you into the new job. That's stuff that you can be doing on the side. Or if you want to, if you really hate your job, you just walk in and you just burn the ships and just go, I'm out, I'm done. And then you wake up the next day and you go, shit, what have I done? <laughs> And then you just go to work, right? Now you just write on a whiteboard and you go, who do I know that I can reach out to? What do I want to do? How am I going to do this? When am I going to do it? And then you just go bang, full-time. Your full-time job becomes finding the next job. 
or your full-time job becomes building a business. Now, I'm not saying one way is better than the other, but as you can tell from my stories, I've done a kind of like a combination of both. So I don't want you to go out and like quit your job and burn the ships right now because James Swanick said on the James Swanick show that I should burn the ships. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm saying you should entertain the idea of it, figure out what works for you. And everyone who's listening here will have a different motivation and a different reason for doing it. Some people will be in a tougher financial spot. It'll be harder for them to make the decision to burn the ships, even though they probably know that burning the ships will actually give them the most progression forward. Again, it's a, it feels a lot harder to burn the ships when you've got a wife and kids to support or a husband or kids or whatever, right? Sometimes you might want to look at your expenses as well. Do you really need that car lease payment? I don't have a car. I live in LA. People think, oh, you need a car in LA. I don't have a car. I get Ubers everywhere. I, had a, I got a rent a car the other day to drive to, a, to a, a, um, an hour south of LA. God, pain in the ass, man. I got to tell you. I, it really reinforced the idea that, I, that I'm right in my thinking and not owning a car in this place in, this, in LA because, man, I had to find parking. It was a nightmare. I got pissed off with other drivers who were driving like maniacs on the freeways. There was shocking traffic. Not that there's not shocking traffic when you're riding in an Uber or a Lyft, but when you're riding in the Uber or Lyft, you can you know, be on your phone you know, calling someone or texting or emailing or you know, updating social media. You can be doing stuff other than having to focus on the road. Just listening to the radio pissed me off too. Man, that Kiss FM, what a bunch of drivel that was. People, the stuff they were talking about, just, just crap, absolute crap. Like talking about pop culture stuff and just ridiculous stuff with no educational value at all. It was shocking to me. And I can imagine people driving around all day in their car, trying to relax to music and listening to these DJs just talk shit about what people were wearing on the Oscars and like celebrity breakups and who gives a shit? God. It was mental diarrhea is what it was. It was shocking to me. So anyway, I went off on a tangent there. I don't want to be, I don't, I'm glad I don't have a car. And if you do have a car, you should be listening to podcasts. In fact, if you're driving right now and you're listening to me, two thumbs up to you. Well done. Well played. In fact, you should probably send me a message and say, hey, James, I was listening to you while I was in the car. Send me a review or a tweet or, or an email or, or, or something like that. Tag me in an Instagram or send me a Snapchat message but don't do it now while you're driving okay but if you're running right now and you're listening to me stop and send it to me and then start running again. no i'm just joking <laughs> keep going anyways or anyway i always get pulled up in australia and england we say anyway but in america they add the s right it's now anyways now i'm involved in mental diarrhea um okay so burn the ships means you just go for it and that could be hard, but it could also be awesome because it might force you to finally take action and it finally focuses you and gives you clarity. And so now you actually increase the chances of succeeding in whatever it is that you, you want to go and succeed in because there's no chance of retreat. That can be effective. I'm not saying it won't be difficult or maybe it won't be, maybe it won't be difficult at all. Maybe you just, you wake up, you quit and then the next day, an opportunity arises and bang, you're off to the races and you think that was the best damn decision I ever made. I can't believe I was laboring about that decision for like two years. Man, I should have done that two years ago. Or you might burn the ships and go, right, 100 miles an hour, I'm going to get this. And then two, three, four weeks pass or three months pass and what you had hoped had happened hadn't happened. And now you're starting to doubt, doubt yourself and go, oh, geez, I did not make the right decision. Oh my God. Listen, if you're in a job you don't like and you hate and it's going nowhere, then you got to get out of it. It's just how you get out of it, but you got to get out of it. You know, you got to get out of it. You don't need me to tell you, you got to get out of it. You know, you do because you will die. Your part of your soul will die from broken dreams and from staying in something that doesn't give you energy. The other way is while you're doing that job on the side, you try to get another job or you try to build a business, or you start getting around people who can help you achieve what it is that you want to achieve. But here's the thing. 
while you can say, oh, that's easy, I can do that, it doesn't matter if it's easy to do it, it only matters if you do it. And too many people will say, I'm gonna do this on the side, and then ultimately, they maybe spend one Saturday for one hour researching it, and then the other six days of the week, they don't do anything because life gets in the way, because I'm tired, because I've had work, it was tough because I've got to go and watch the movie, because we're going away on vacation, because whatever. So it's easy to say, oh, I'm going to build a business on the side. It doesn't matter what you say you're going to do. It only matters what you do. So I want to emphasize this point, because too many people in the world say what they're going to do. That doesn't matter. Just do it. It only matters what you do. It's like I had someone the other day who was saying, oh, this person, they're talking about a, a business person who was talking on social media go, this person's program oh i was doing that like three years ago this stuff is so simple i could do this this is easy i'm like yeah but you didn't i didn't say that to the person i was just thinking you didn't this person's making millions of dollars because that person did it you just thought about doing it and you pissed off the other person did it and isn't pissed off it's like it only matters what you do it doesn't matter what you say you're going to do it only matters what you do that's why guys get this wrong as well. Like guys, like, let me tell you something about romantic relationships. Not that I'm, you know, know that much about it. You could argue that I know nothing about it, but um, it doesn't matter what you say. It only matters what you do. It's like, so any, any, so guys, if you're in a romantic relationship with a woman, if you say you're going to do something, then damn well do it because she's judging you either consciously or subconsciously. If you say you're going to pick her up at six, don't pick her up at six thirty. pick her up at six. If you say that you're going to, um, you're going to do something on Saturday, don't then on Saturday, like a few hours before say, Oh, I'm not really feeling it. Can we put it back to Sunday? No, just do it. Because the moment that you start breaking things, you know, breaking your word is the moment that people stop trusting you. And it, it doesn't even have to be other people. It can be you. You might mentally say to yourself, I'm very popular here. I'm getting phone calls coming through. You might say to yourself, I'm going to start this new business on the side. But then three months go by and you, don't, you haven't started the business on the site and now you don't trust yourself. So then it becomes a lot harder for you to actually do anything because, you, you've, because your experience has been what you say you're going to do, you haven't done. And so now you don't trust anything that you say you're going to do. So you don't trust yourself. So if you say you're going to do something, then do something. Um, so you've got two choices, burn the ships, no retreat, set fire to it and just go for it. That has positives and it has negatives. Or you can do things on the side as long as you do it on the side. Don't say you're going to do it on the side and don't do it on the side. You have to do it on the side and then build that up to a certain level where you feel comfortable enough to be able to then set fire to the job or the business or the situation that you are in. Which way works for you? Send me a message and tell me, burn the ships or on the side? If you burn the ships or you start something on the side, I want to hear from you. I want to know about it. Uh, leave a review. Um, send me a tweet at James Swanick. Follow me on Snapchat at James Swanick. Send me an Instagram direct message. I respond to almost everyone on my, on my social media. So if you send me a message on Instagram or you tag me on Instagram, I will see it and I will respond most of the time, probably 99%. Sometimes I just miss things. Uh, if you send me a snap message, most of the time I'll respond. Sometimes I don't, I get a lot. Um, so sometimes I just miss them. Um, but if you, you have a high chance of that, I will respond if you send, if you reach out to me on Instagram or social media or, or, or Snapchat or, or you tag me. So let me know, burn the ships or on the side, what are you going to do? I want to hear from you. Hope this was helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.